This is a video review for Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Drift. Um, and let me just start off by saying that uh, I know I know there's all sorts of various opinions about Drift. Uh, some people love him, some people hate him, some people think he's a Mary Sue. Um, and I've never really felt very strongly one way or another about Drift. Uh, he was there, whatever. Um, I thought he was semi-decent in the comics, but uh, nothing breakthrough or outstanding. Um, I didn't think he was overpowered, especially since they like haven't even really brought him up again in several months, so I'm not, uh, I know he's getting his own miniseries, but whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't have a lot of rage for Drift. I also don't have a whole lot of, uh, oh wow, super awesome uh, feelings for Drift. Um, the toy changed that a little bit. Um, this toy is a very nice toy, and we'll get into that. Um, well, you can see he's kind of a Japanese racing car. Uh, I don't know if he'd be considered a ricer. I, I, I don't exactly know what that term means. Uh, I've, I've seen it used a lot with uh, the cliff jumper add-on kit, but uh, whatever. I don't need a lot of people telling me what it is. I, I really am not all that interested. Uh, he's got you know some Japanese characters on his on his sides, to white and red uh, racing car. Rolls actually much better than most. Uh, we saw him a, a little over a year ago, I think, or maybe not quite a year ago, in, in red prototype form. Everybody was guessing who he was going to be. Turns out he's Drift. And he does have this giant sword on the bottom, which, uh, which actually I'm going to go ahead and take off. It makes transformation a little easier uh, to not have that in there. It is, sadly, it is a very bendy plastic sword. Um, it does have some Cybertronian characters carved onto it. Maybe those are Japanese, not sure. But uh, anyway, got some symbols carved into it. Long sword, very bendy. And to transform him, I just want to kind of come up here kind of grab him and bend his legs back here. I'm going to bring these all the way down like that and then the hood piece here you want to pop out and down and you want to bring up uh, up and forward and uh, and right up into the leg like that. So you pull it and rotate it up into the leg. I'll go ahead and split his legs apart there. Um, just fold the feet up and to fit normally. There we go. And get those all the way up in the into his leg cavity there. So they kind of meet up with the red peats bits. Just like that. There we go. Take some doing. And you come up here. Now doors. You just want to kind of pull down like this for the time being. And then split everything up here. You can see his head. You want to take these panels. Uh, here we go. Now these panels you actually lift up onto the what's going to become the shoulder pad. Uh, rotate these back for a minute. And then these side panels. What you want to do is flip out the handles on these little swords here, and uh, flip the uh, windshield up and in. And do the same over here. Flip the little sword panel up. Flip the windshield up and in. We go ahead and take the windshield of the car and. Peg it up into his chest here. There's a little slot. There you go. Just snap it in. And then we bring these down and extend the arms out and rotate his fist around. And we do the same over here. And there you have Drift in robot mode. Um, and, he's, and he's really pretty cool. Um, a lot of posability. Um, he's got these little sheaths on the uh, hang off his waist that uh, you can pull these little swords out and you can hold both of those um, in his hands, obviously. Um, but very cool that they just kind of store there on the side and the doors. Um, the, this big long sword can stay where it was. It sheaths on his back like this. Um, it just kind of snaps in. I'm not snapping it all the way in, but it does snap all the way in there on his back. And, it, and it also, of course, it fits in his hand. So he's got a couple different varying size swords. He's got the Autobot symbols on both his shoulders. Um, and just really very um, very cool. I, like I said, I wasn't real big. I didn't have any strong feelings either way toward Drift. Um, and I'll still wait and see how he uh, turns out in the comics. But, uh, but the toy itself is actually a very nice toy. 
Um, I, th I think the windshield on the chest like that is something a little different and kind of cool. I know some people have some issue with it, but uh, I kind of dig it. Um, the swords. Um, he's got ball jointed shoulders. Does have a double hinged head. Uh, he's got a rotating neck and then a hinged head, so he can get some good posability out of his out of his neck and head. Uh, ball jointed hips. Uh, hinge knees. Um, there is some a little bit of flexibility in how his feet, the way his feet go together, uh, to give you some posability there in his ankles as well. Um, he does have a mid thigh swivel. Um, he's got a bicep swivel, and then he does have double hinged elbows here, uh, and then ball jointed wrists. So he's got got an overall, and then these round ball joints here as well. These sheaths on his waist. So overall, um, some fairly decent articulation. He does not appear to have a waist. No, he does not have any waist swivel. But, um, but yeah, I'm very cool. Uh, there's going to be a blur repaint of this toy later on down the line, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's a nice to be nice to have an official blur to go up on the shelf with all my other figures. Uh, and then again, just size comparison wise, here he is with the. Uh, Classic Seeker mold, classic Skywarp, and you can see he's a little bit bigger and bulkier than the classic Seeker in robot mode. Um, but yeah, overall, um, regardless of whether you like the character himself, and if you don't like the character and you don't want to buy the toy, fine. Uh, but the toy is actually very nice, and, and I'd recommend grabbing him when he hits shelves. But there you have it, uh, Generations Deluxe Drift.